Stonewall. A call to worship. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our hymn of praise will be found on page 518, Yield Not to Temptation. from our faith by the use of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, and the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from this you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. 
Amen. Amen. announcements. The announcements for the Sunday are as follows. Stop in or check the library for the summer programs at the Allegra Westbrook Regional Library. The Rosa Parks Farmer Market is open now through the end of September 2023. See flyer or postcard for more details. Our member, Ms. Ruby Gorham, is the secretary of the board of directors. Please contact her directly for more details. Also, allow Mr. Bratchett a few minutes to discuss the pastor's first anniversary celebration. Now we will have our scripture lesson. So we actually, you can, he can just come right here. Just have him to stand right here. We'll give him the mic. I know, but that's going to take forever. Mr. Bratchett. Mr. Bratchett. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I would like to say good morning to all of you. Be aware that on the second Sunday, we will be celebrating the Passover. On the second Sunday, uh, July, we will be celebrating the Pastor uh, uh, Homecoming uh, one year. And we want you to take the, we have the envelopes this morning. Uh, please re take one so that we can have things in order. So when the second Sunday comes, uh, people will already be written their name on the envelope and, and the pastor's name. And, you know, we didn't got it spelled like it's supposed to be. And then we can be ready to uh, celebrate uh, one, hun uh, one year. And we want to let her know that we appreciate her being here. And we thank God for her, that he will continue to bless her, that she might lead us to higher heights. We just want to thank our pastor for the kind and loving attitude that she has in, in, in charge of this congregation, that we might be running to make heaven our home. Thank you Amen. so much. Amen. 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 And God bless you. Thank you so very much. Ms. Camille for presiding and leading us. Thank you, Brother Bratcher, for your special announcement. Um, it will be, uh, we moved pastor's appreciation to after conference. We were pretty confident I was not going to be moved, praise God. <laughs> so um, it was, so we're doing it after um, annual conference instead of the, the traditional customary beforehand. Um, what, what I find ironic today, it's not ironic, God does all things in order. Today is the actual first day of our new conference year. Last Sunday, even though we ended conference last Saturday, the bishop made it very clear that for those who had changes, they were to go back to their same church last Sunday, and that today was the day that new appointments would be in effect. So today is the first Sunday of our new conference year. Um, but I got a, a reminder in my calendar today reminding me that today, 17 years ago today, is when I received my first pastoral appointment. So, 
as it was June 25th, 2006. Amen, somebody. So to God be the glory. Um, we are grateful to God for all that he is doing, all that he will continue to do in our lives individually and collectively, for we are trusting God to continue to be a blessing and to show us what new levels he would have us to go to. Amen. Amen. I am so excited about this graduate Sunday. And so uh, I'm going to get out of the way so that we can press on into everything that we have to handle this morning. Amen. Yes. East on wall. Yes. East on wall. Let's have church. Amen. Our scripture lesson will be given by Mr. David Blair, followed by a short prayer by Ms. Gabrielle Sisson. The scripture I'll be reading is Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found, found by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear God. Today we join together to celebrate and give thanks to every graduate here. Thank you God for leading them as they learned, for watching them over their exams and keeping them safe from any harm while on campus or at their school. We pray that they may all feel accomplished and proud to share this, these achievements with the world as they continue in their future. We know the road ahead won't be an easy one, and I pray in those moments of doubt or hardship, they'll continue to stay strong and have faith that troubling times don't last always. And I speak victory, success, and happiness over every single graduate here today as they embark on their life's journey. In the name of Jesus, I do pray, amen. We will now have an introduction of our speaker by Mr. Roland Forbes, followed by a selection from our choir, and then the next voice you will hear will be Micah Darkins as our speaker. Amen. Good morning, East Stonewall. Right. Micah Darkins is the son of Alan and Kelly Darkins, brother to Mackenzie, and grandson of East Stonewall member. Ms. Dorothy Pittman. He is a 2021 honor graduate at the Philip Bowberry Academy of Technology. He is currently attends North Carolina A&T State University, where he is a junior, majoring in kinesiology. Since the age of nine, Micah has been an avid gamer, and it's still his favorite hobby. In his spare time, he also likes skateboarding and hanging out with friends. After graduating from college, 
Micah's desire is to open a gym and work in an area for physical therapy. After the selection by the choir, you hear our voice of our great brother, Micah Dargins.
How y'all doing this morning? Uh, the pastor Ciceron, the ministerial staff, the church family, and the stars of the day, the 2023 graduates, good morning. Ms. Walker asked me to be the speaker today, last year on graduation Sunday. I didn't think she was serious until the day came, and here we are. <laughs> Graduates, in 2021, I sat where you are sitting, except the graduation service was in the Family Life Center. But I was in your shoes just two years ago. Graduation marks a significant milestone in your lives. You started this journey 13 years ago, and now you are here, having received your hard-earned diploma. As you look back on the past few years, you realize how much you've grown, learned, and accomplished. In Deuteronomy 31.6, it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. This verse shall always be a source of inspiration to you. It reminds you that even when you face challenges, you are not alone. God is with you, guiding you, and helping you overcome your fears. As you step into the next phase of your lives, you will face new challenges that will test your strength and faith. For me, it was my freshman year of college. College was a very social place and it was hard for me to adjust. I missed my family and I felt lonely and isolated. I didn't say that to discourage you, but I said that to tell you that you will face challenges that may seem impossible. Being in college, trying to create a, a social identity and break out of my shell was a challenge that I thought that I would never conquer. But you will realize as you move forward, remember that, God, that, you, remember that with God, you have the strength and the courage to overcome all obstacles. I'm living proof as I stand before you today. Amen. Embrace the future with an open heart, knowing that God is with you and will never leave you. Be bold, take risks, and pursue your dreams with passion and perseverance. Never forget the support system that got you here, too. Your families, friends, teachers, mentors, and church members have all played a significant role in your success. They have encouraged you, challenged you, and believed in you, even when you didn't believe in yourself. Today, as you celebrate your achievements, take a moment to thank them for, the, for their unwavering support. 2023 graduates, be bold and make a difference in the world. Be a shining light to, the, to all those around you and never forget the lessons that you have learned, the memories you made, and the people, your parents, family, and friends who helped you get to where you are today. Lastly, as you celebrate the, this milestone, remember you were born with a purpose, and it's your responsibility to discover that purpose and fulfill it because we are the future, and we have the potential to create a better world. So, so let us go and live our lives with the intention of making it a better place. In conclusion, graduates, you made it. You have successfully completed this chapter of your lives and are ready for the next one. You are resilient, and you survived the global pandemic. So go out and make the world a better place. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your, for, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Congratulations, class of 2023. Thank you and God bless. Now we will have a presentation of our graduates by our scholarship committee. Michael, I asked you last year this time, and you said, oh, okay. All right, all right. <laughs> you didn't think I was serious? And all during the year, I kept saying, Michael, you ready? You ready? You said, okay, okay. <laughs> I called him last night. I said, Michael, are you ready? Yes, ma'am, I'm ready. Beautiful, beautiful speech. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. I, I knew you would be ready. East Stonewall, good morning. I'm pleased to be here today to honor our graduates. Um, they worked hard, 
They spent time, much time, that they, I'm sure, didn't want to, but they're here today. I'm going to first introduce our college graduate. We have one here. It's not on? It is on. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, Melissa Wilkes is not here today. But Mar Marissa, I'm sorry, Marissa is the daughter of Mr. Steve and Marcy Wilkes and the granddaughter of Mrs. Reba Wilkes. She is not here. She graduated from Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> On May 21st, uh, 2023, with a Bachelor's of Arts degree, uh, Comparative Women's Studies. Um, Melissa is enjoying her summer in Atlanta, and she's hoping to get a um, internship done. Melissa Wills. <laughs> Shariah Bonds. Shariah, come up. Will the family and friends of Shariah please stand? She has here her mother, her father, her sister, her brother. Uh, Shariah is the daughter of Ms. Shahura and her grandmother, uh, Joyce. She is the daughter of uh, Shahura and Rayvon Bonds and the granddaughter of Mrs. Joyce Stewart. Shariah graduated from the University of North Carolina at Pembroke, Pembroke, North Carolina on May 6, 2023. She majored in <laughs> information technology with a concentration in cyber society. All right. <laughs> she has a double minor in psychology and business administration. Shariah okay. would like for you to know that in the spring of 2019, she pledged Zeta Phi Beta, and in that chapter, she has served as president, vice president, secretary, and assistant secretary. Amen. She wears the blue and white proudly. So when you see her wearing blue and white, you know she is a true, true Zeta, Shariah Bonds. <laughs> you want to give her a gift? Okay. Um, Jashara, would you come up, please? Jashara Audrey is the son of Mr. Jimmy Audrey, Miss Ari White, and the grandson of Mrs. Mildred Audrey. Jashara graduated from Charlotte Mecklenburg School uh, from the Performing Learning Center. In June 13, 2023, he graduated salutatorium. <laughs> Sh Shahara has always loved animals. When we would have missionary meeting on Saturday morning, he brought some animal with him to, to our meeting with his grandmother. So he would like to... Uh, have a career of a veterinarian. Amen. He was accepted at uh, A&T State University, uh, Michael, uh, in that program, but he decided later to attend CPC Central uh, Piedmont Community College, and he has a full ride to Amen. CPC. So, 
So he's attending, he's already enrolled there this summer with a job, and he, he might have to leave early because he has to go to his job. But um, he plans to attend a &T later after attending CPC. Sharara, Mildred, you didn't stand. <laughs> okay. Our next graduate is <laughs> Nicholas is the son of Reverend Amy and Mr. John Frank. John Frank? Oh, you're doing all right. You're doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> He's a graduate from Jacksonville yeah. High School. Yeah, really. And he graduated on June 12th, 2023. Yeah, Gabby. Uh, I received several letters about him from his uh, counselor, from his English teacher, and from his church that he attended. And you know, last year, um, Nick, and he's called Nick, he was not here. But I want you all to get to know him this year as he participate in, here at East Stonewall. During his high school career, his school counselor wrote, he has been dedicated to becoming a young man of quality that is competitive as an athlete. He has challenged himself through Jacksonville High School academics, taken honors, international baccalaureate, and dual enrollment classes. His his uh, his Excellence has earned him acceptance into the National Honor Society as well as consistent recognition of, of the honors there at Jacksonville High School, which is the principal's list. Nicholas is a quiet man, very respectful and kind. He challenged himself both personally and academic to be better. Athletics have also been a staple in Nicholas' accomplishment. He has emerged himself in Jacksonville High School uh, soccer and lacrosse program since his freshman year. Uh, Nicholas attended what, St. Julia, St. Julia High School in uh, Jacksonville High School, Jacksonville. North Carolina. And there his um, CPD, CED president, which is Christian Education, wrote a letter about him. He mentioned the same things about the honor societies he was enrolled in and all the classes he took, even having a part-time job. Uh, he mentioned that he's been actively involved in many of the church's outreach programs uh, which included participating as an acolyte, a highway program, cleaning uh, Martin Luther King uh, and Coretta Scott King's highway, helping with the food distribution ministry program, and with feeding the homeless by serving meals at Thanksgiving and with community fish fry events. Nicholas has served as a youth usher, Acrolyte, member of the youth choir, and participated in district and conference activities. Even during COVID-19 pandemic, he took the initiative and volunteered to participate in virtual programs, which he showcased his spiritual gifts for Mother's Day, Father's Day, Children's Day, and birthday. Um, in his free time, Nicholas enjoyed leading his church choir, church choir and sharing his athletic talents with the community youth by volunteering as a youth coach. Nicholas is an outstanding, hardworking, faithful, and responsible youth. After high school, Nicholas has, deci has decided to attend the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. We are confident that he will represent this scholarship 
which we are about to award for to him at the University of North Carolina Charlotte campus. Michael, uh, I'm sorry, um, Nicholas is receiving the uh, East Stonewall Emmy Zion Church Scholarship. Uh, two of $2,000, which will be presented to him 1000 each semester. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to your name, God. Uh, Nicholas, we congratulate, and he's called Nick, isn't it? Nick. Nick, we congratulate you, and we wish you well. And we know from all the information we've received from your school and from your church that you will do well. We congratulate and let us know how you're doing. And we want the congregation to really welcome Nick because he was not here during the year. So you did not get to see him because he was in Jacksonville going to school. Congratulations again and thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks for being here, all the participants that participated on the program, and again to our speaker. Thank you. Amen. Can we give all of our graduates? Amen. We are so proud of you and so excited for you. Um, for those of us who have walked this walk, taken this path, we have some ideas to what lies ahead. And so I, I ask that you would take the words of Mr. Dargins to heart. Uh, they were filled with wisdom even though he started acting like his daddy at the end. I gave him a hug and he said, them heels give you some height. I said, now you see you acting like your daddy now. But I, he did an awesome job, a powerful work. And in fact, can we have, can we have the parents and grandparent of this young man to please stand? His mother is back there working in that booth. Kelly, Kelly. Kelly Dargins. Can you just wave your hand? We, amen. Because we know that you all are so proud of him. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing to be our speaker this morning. Um, let, me, uh, let me just share. So, like he said, he said, he said, I know I ain't a member. He said, I know I ain't a member. But I, I just wanted to share that. Um, we do have a visitor with us this morning, visiting with uh, Brother uh, JP and Cherie uh, Williams, Bill Williams, first time guest from Augusta, Georgia. Just want to recognize your presence. God bless you. So happy to have you this morning. so that we won't belabor things much. I just have a, a quick word to say to add to what Master Dargins has already shared with us. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Found in the book of Joshua, chapter 21. Joshua, chapter 21, I will read verses 43 to 45. from the New International Version of Scripture. The 
This is what it says. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their ancestors. And, and they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their ancestors. Not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord gave all their enemies into their hands. Not one, <clears throat> not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. And I just want to encourage our graduates and all of us this morning from this subject, promise keeper, mission accomplished. Promise keeper, mission accomplished. We all have both made promises and had promises made to us. And despite one's best intentions, sometimes promises aren't kept. Sometimes life happens. It causes us to live differently than we intended. Nobody sets out to break a promise, at least I hope. I mean, people don't intentionally live in opposition to their word. Although sometimes in our world today, it seems that folk are intentional about breaking promises and misleading folk. It seems that for some, from the moment an idea is conjured in their minds, it is only for show. Because what they're trying to do is manipulate others. But what I want us to understand this morning, that even when you can't count on the promises of mama or daddy, even if you can't count on the promises of sister or brother or spouses or best friend, I want you to know that there is a promise keeper upon whom you can always depend. And that promise keeper is our God our Lord, our Savior. God always keeps his promises. Y'all, that was such a weak amen. I'm going to say that again. God always keeps his promises. Amen, amen somebody. God had promised to give Abraham's seed the land of Canaan. In fact, he woke Abraham up one night and he told him to go out and look at the stars. He said, can you count them? Look up there and see how many they are. As many as you see, that will be your heritage. That will be your lineage. That will be your, prosper your posterity. That will be the family that extends from your loins. Uh, and in addition to promising this man with no children, one of the biggest families ever, God further promised uh, the land that they would one day possess. According to the text, God kept, his promise. It was after Abraham. We are now in the book of Joshua. Abraham uh, is no longer around. In fact, Moses has also already died. But God's word is still being fulfilled. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land that he had sworn to give 
their ancestors. There are just three little things I want you to remember when you are at school or starting your life and your career and it doesn't seem as if your dreams are being fulfilled or things aren't happening as fast as you would like them to happen or it seems as though your life isn't producing what you expect it to produce. Never forget God keeps his promises and if he's allowed you to accomplish one mission as long as there is air circulating in your lungs and blood circulating in your veins God still has other missions to accomplish in your life the first thing I want you to remember delayed isn't denied The Lord gave to Israel all the land he has sworn to give them. Now with this moment in the book of Joshua, when God fulfills what God said he was, would do, he said it to Abraham, but now it's hundreds of years later. And the promise is now fulfilled during the time of Joshua. At last, the promise is fulfilled. Not halfway, not partially, but God has fully done what God said. Now, when Israel goes back and read the Torah, which is what the uh, first five books of the Old Testament was called, they could recount the goodness of God. And, and the list of names that they had for God, from Elohim to Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, the list of names that they had for God, they could now add promise keeper to that list of names. Because they always named God based on things God had done in their lives. That which God had started, he has now fulfilled. It took a long time, but, but it wasn't always because of God. There were times when Israel themselves forfeited the promise of God. There were many occasions when Israel had to stop and start over. They had stops and starts and roadblocks and hiccups and potholes and all manner of stumbling blocks but here they are they have now made it there were times when Israel didn't keep up their end of the bargain the first time that they got close to the promised land and God said to them I have given the land to you go in and possess it they went in 12 went in, two came out saying, we can do this thing. We can take this land. We can, we can handle this. If God said it, I believe it. That settles it. Let's go and do this. 10 came out and said, we can't do this. Y'all must have done lost y'all mind. Them folks so big, they are like giants in our eyes. And when we look at ourselves, we look like grasshoppers in comparison to them. Uh, we can't do this. And so they stirred up the rest of the nation. And, 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 and so majority ruled uh, to the point that they were too afraid to go and do what God said uh, they could do. They, they delayed their own promise. And, and if you and I are honest with ourselves, there are times in our own lives when we have delayed the promise of God. There are some things that God has tried to do in us and with us. And, and because of our fear and sometimes because of our stubbornness, we, we, we ain't moved. And, and, and our lack of motion left us paralyzed left us stuck just looking and the same thing happened to Israel but I'm so glad that despite the stops and starts 
Despite the detours, de despite the hiccups and the roadblocks and the stumbling blocks, I'm so glad that God didn't only know about them, but God was in charge of them. Because in our own humanness, whenever we start out with a deal with somebody, and if they don't keep up their end of the deal, we tend to change the terms of the agreement. Somebody don't keep up their end of the deal. We go back to the contract and we begin to manipulate it and make changes. Uh, but I'm so glad that God doesn't manipulate our contract. That even when we are delayed and we don't trust him like we ought to, God's word is still yea and amen. God is still uh, standing there waiting for us to get it right. I'm so glad he's a promise keeper and he's determined to take us with him. So remember that delayed isn't denied. Second thing I want you to remember is that Yahresh is not Yashab. You're like, what in the world is she saying? I, ha I had to go to the Hebrew on this, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get my alliteration right, y'all. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to them or to sworn to give their ancestors. Verse 43 still. And they took possession of it and settled there. They took possession of it. That's Yarish. And they settled there. That's Yashab. I say Yarish isn't Yashab because this word Yarish, which means to take possession, means to seize or to inherit or possess. It means to devour something. But, but the polar opposite is also a definition of this word. It can also mean to dispose of something in the Hebrew, or to be impoverished by something, or to come to poverty or disinherit. So it could be something you inherit or disinherit, something you get or something you, 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 you just give away. Like, like, like folk who inherit their mom and daddy house and then let taxes rise and don't pay the taxes and, and then somebody else come along pay the taxes and that which your mom and them worked all their life for got taken away from you in a matter of two years preach Ciceron I think I might you possessed it but you didn't settle in it Ah, somebody, somebody, help me. So, so this word about possession, possession, you, you, can, you can have it one day and it's gone the next. You see, the ability to possess something is saying to us that the ability to shared or yaresh or possess is short-lived unless we also yashab settle there. The yashab or to settle means to dwell, remain, or stay in a place. It means to inhabit and dwell or abide there. And so it, it, they made a point of saying, why, why didn't they just say, okay, and they possessed the land? Well, couldn't that have been enough? But they made a point of saying, no, no, they possessed it and they settled in it. Because they understood that possession is not enough. And what happens in our lives at times is that we possess stuff. And, 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 and as soon as we get it, or, or, or because we don't have a, a connection to it, or because we didn't work for it, or struggled for it, or, or we didn't sweat any blood or tears, Ah, uh, it, it, it was easy come and it was easy go. But, but unless you also settle in what you possess, you can turn around and it'll be gone. 
Th this is what I want these graduates and all of us to know is, is that th there are times when God puts us in places. There are times when God puts us in places and, and we possess a thing, a position. We, we possess a job. We possess a title. And then the enemy comes along and make us think we ain't worthy of it. And when the enemy thinks that we're not worthy of it, we don't settle in it. We never claim it and hold on to it. You, you know, my, my, my family don't ever get that. We've always been. Low level folk. We, we don't, we don't, we don't, we, we can't be doctors and lawyers and such. We, we, we've always been housekeepers and, book, you know, we, that's what we've done. No, 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 no. What God puts in you, He means for you to use it to the greatest of your abilities and His capability in you. Which means you can do anything. Don't ever think that something is too far above you. Don't ever think that something is out of your reach. Because the reality is, is if God gives you the vision to see it, you can achieve it. If God gives you the eyes to see, God is saying you can get it. You can go there. You can be there. Never feel as though I might possess it, but I can't stay here because I don't have what it takes. That's the enemy's greatest trick for many of us. He don't mind if we possess church. He just don't want us to settle here. Because he knows if you just possess it, it just becomes an every nine damn thing. I just come, you know, because it's a fashionable thing. But when you settle in it, not only are you in the church, but the church is in you. And God is in you. And, and you will let no devil in hell turn you around, change your mind, intimidate you, make you feel unworthy. You got to go possess it. And once you possess it, settle in it. Because if God allows you to achieve it, it's because God intends for you to be there. Don't ever let what you were determine what you're going to be. Don't ever let what you came from determine where you're going. Don't ever let people and things and even that mind of yours cause you to cancel yourself out of God's best for your life. Yaresh is not Yashab. And when, when you possess it, I'm challenging your parents and your grandparents, your aunties and your uncles. Uh, I'm challenging your godparents. When they see it in you, whenever they possess it, I want y'all to challenge them to settle in it. Feel good about it. Get comfortable in it. Because that's what you deserve. That's where you're supposed to be. That's what you're supposed to do. He who has begun a good work in you will bring it to fulfillment and completion. I want you to know, delayed isn't denied. Yaresh isn't Yashab. Lastly, I want you to know that failure isn't finished. Verse 45, not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. Not one of the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Look at what it doesn't say. It doesn't say that Israel didn't fail. 
Doesn't say that Israel didn't stumble. Doesn't say that Israel didn't make a mistake. What it did say is that every promise God made to them, God kept it. And what I need you all to know this morning is that you going to make some mistakes. You're going to have some failure. Is there anybody other than me in this building willing to admit to these young people you have failed at something? You done messed up, tripped up, fell down, been in the mud. And at times when we fell in the mud, it felt good. And we stayed there a little while and wallowed. Wallowed for a little while. Until, like the prodigal son eating the slop, we came to ourselves. Yeah, God. Oh, you're going to have some failures. I hope it ain't a, I hope it ain't a class, but, but even if it is, I remember my freshman year, I had a D in a class. I ain't never had a D. Well, let me stop. No, I did have a D. Lord, I, in the first semester, a uh, 2.1. <laughs> 2 2.1. I was having a good time at college. Hey, somebody. Don't, don't y'all get no ideas. But failure isn't finished. There is always a comeback in God. It says that God didn't fail. We are going to make mistakes, but God won't fail. We are going to have stumbles, but God doesn't fail. Throughout the life of Israel, you will find this ebb and flow. God will tell them something, and God will get them out of trouble, and they'll do good for a while. Until they get on the mountaintop with God, and begin to think that it's all about them. And then God is like, I done told y'all. Why I got to keep doing God was just like our parents, like, like us on y'all. How many times I got to tell y'all this? How many times we got to have this conversation? Y'all up here, and now you done got the big head. Now you think it's all about you. Now you're going out and making ungodly allegiances. Hooking up with false gods hooking up with ungodly people and, and when you hook up with ungodly people what we need to understand according to Haggai your, your holiness ain't gonna rub off on them but their hellish ways will rub off on you what Haggai lets us know is you don't get holiness by contact you, you, you gotta spend some time with the Lord to be holy uh, but, but, but bad habits and, and hellish ways they'll rub off just by hanging around them and, and, and so you can think that nothing's coming out or nothing's happening but little by little uh, things are changing and that's what was happening with Israel and they would start on a slow decline and God would send a prophet and that prophet would start preaching turn around uh, God is nigh do God's will and they will look at the prophet and say you done lost your mind you crazy things are going well for us because they couldn't see the slow decline and it wasn't until the bottom fell out that they realized that they had failed God again and when they hit the bottom that's when they started going oh Lord save us Come and get us. I won't do it no more. If you get me out of this one. If you save me this time. Lord I promise. I promise God. If you make a way this time. I won't do it again. Israel made those same promise, promises again and again and again. But their life continued to be an up and down ebb and flow but when it's all said and done God never gave up on Israel God never let go of Israel and God kept all of God's promises to Israel 
Watch this. Y'all got some parents and grandparents that have been praying over your lives. And even when you go out there and get away from the teachings that they have given you, because of the promises God done made to your grandma and them and your mama and daddy and them, because of the promises made in prayer for those who have fasted and prayed uh, for your good success. Uh, God's good promises over your life will never fail. God's good promises over your life are yes and amen. Uh, God's good promises over your life uh, will always be intact, uh, mission accomplished, uh, and he has many more. For your life. Failure ain't finished. Failure ain't final. Ask Peter. Who failed Christ. Just before his death. Claiming I don't know the man. When Jesus died. Peter was crushed. But on Sunday morning, on Resurrection Sunday, when Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible said that he said to the women, or that the angel said to the women, go tell my disciples, watch this, and Peter. Why would he call him out? Because he realized, Peter just denied me. Peter was my ride or die. P Peter was that, 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 that rude, cussing sailor. The one who pulled out his sword and cut off the ear. The one who said, Lord, I'm going to die with you. I'm with you. Like four flats, we down. I got, I got you. He was the one. But yet, he was the one who said, I don't know the man. Had they just said, go tell my disciples, uh, because of the Yasha, the, the Yaresh and Yareb, uh, he might have felt excluded. B because even though he had possessed the title, he probably no longer settled there because of his denial. But when the angels of the Lord called him out and said, not only all the other disciples, but particularly tell Peter that I'm going ahead of them. And I'm going to meet them uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, we understood that failure ain't final. Failure ain't finished. As long as Jesus got the keys uh, to death, hell, and the grave. As long as Jesus uh, has all power in his hand. Uh, failure ain't final. And failure ain't finished. Uh, God still uh, has a promise to keep uh, in your life uh, and other missions to accomplish through you. Remember that he wants to use you. Delayed ain't denied. Yahresh isn't Yasha. Failure isn't finished. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us stand. Is there one this morning who knows him to be a promise keeper? Or maybe you knew that, but somewhere lost a lot, uh, along, the, along the way, you've lost contact, you've lost touch. And as a result, you've been feeling as though you're all alone. You've been feeling as though the promises of God no longer apply to you. Are you here this morning? Because the first thing we must do to be sure that God's promises are yea and amen to our lives is that we must surrender to him. So my question to you this morning is, are you saved? Basically, 
Have you said yes to the salvific work of Jesus on the cross? Have you said, yes, God, I, I've tried it my way. I've tried to run my life my way, but it just hasn't worked out. I've done everything that I know how to do, but it's not worked in my favor. Failure ain't finished nor final. Your being delayed ain't denied. simply need to yaresh possess it so that you can yashev settle in it and claim it as your own are you here today and you've never said yes to God never surrendered never been saved it's, it's no big thing that you gotta do that's so out there it's just you saying yes life doesn't immediately change overnight it'll begin to change gradually as you learn to let go a little every day to let God order your steps are you here today and you want to say yes God I surrender all I, I, I want you to save me are you here and you want to be saved this morning? Doors of the church are open. Are you here and you are saved? But, but maybe somewhere along the line you, you've fallen away and you just want to rededicate yourself to God. Reaffirm yourself in his presence. aren't final when we stumble and fall and fall away from God God is just waiting like the father of the prodigal son he's just waiting for us to come back are you here and you just want to rededicate yourself to God are you here and you just want to pray at the altar Doors of the church are open. They've been long open. Jesus did it. I just extend invitations. As the choir sings, the altar is open. I'm here. Is there one today? He gave his only son and Jesus so loved us that he gave his life. And we are called to give back a little of that which God has given unto us. It's called a tithe. Tithe means tenth. Don't mean money. Tithe means tenth. And we're called to give God a tenth, tenth of who we are. Our time, our talent, and our treasure. We're at the moment now where we give God a tenth of, a tenth of our treasure. As you prepare your gifts, we're going to ask that the ushers would lead us as the stewards would come to receive the gifts. If you are online or like me, we do have Givelify, whether you have the app or need to go to the URL on the website, you can find Givelify and search for East Stonewall AME Zion Church. We'll see my name, Reverend Dr. Amy Ciceron. You can also give 
that way. God, we ask now that you would bless the gift and the giver. Hallow the gift to yourself. It will be used for your kingdom. Amen. Let us stand as we come to bring our gifts unto the Lord. is a promise keeper and he is willing to accomplish every mission he sets in your life. Thus far graduates he's accomplished the current mission for 2023 whether it was your high school graduation or your college graduation. There'll be little missions along the way but in the midst of it all do remember delayed isn't denied 
Yarish is a Yashem. And failure is not finished. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and who can present us as spotless before the presence of his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Understand, Miss Walker, there is a reception for the graduates. I, there's a reception for the graduates. No, not today. Okay, amen. <laughs>